Welcome to Electron Line. Here's a rather challenging problem for you. Let's say we have two bodies, a body with mass m and a body with mass 2m. The body with mass m has an initial velocity v sub naught, and the body with mass 2m has zero initial velocity. There's a head-on collision, and the coefficient of restitution is equal to one-third. Now the question. If we assume that the specific heat of the 2m body is equal to c, and an equal amount of heat is shared from the collision, of course, between the two objects, the two bodies, then what is the delta t, the change in the temperature for the 2m body? And just to help us along, we have the coefficient of restitution equation that most of us don't remember right offhand, and so that will kind of help us get started. So what that means is we need to find the final velocities of both objects for object 1 and object 2. So this is object 1 and this is object 2. So first we're going to find the final velocity of object 1. So let's plug in what we know in this equation. So in this case that is equal to mass 1 which is m times v initial for the v initial of the first mass plus mass 2 which is 2m times v initial which is 0 plus mass 2, which is 2m, times the coefficient restitution, which is 1 third, times the difference between the velocity of the second object, which is 0, minus the velocity of the first object, which is v initial. So that should give us the final velocity of the first object. Now let's see, this term here goes to 0, all divided by the denominator, which is the sum of the two masses, which would be m plus 2m. All right, so that gives us the following. That gives us equal to mv initial minus 2 thirds mv initial divided by 3m. 2 thirds, that would be 1 third divided by 3, which is 1 9. The m's cancel out, which is equal to 1 9th v initial. So that is the final velocity of the small object. What about the final velocity of the large object? Well then, v2 final, we can use the conservation momentum, would be m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial minus m, uh, let's see here, that would be m1 v1 final all divided by m2. So that will come right out of the conservation momentum equation. That the initial momentum equals the final momentum, so we take the momentum, the final momentum of the first object, for which we note the velocity to the right, and we can solve for the velocity of the second object. So this will be equal to m1 v1 initial, that would be m v1 initial plus zero, because this quantity will go to zero, because there's no initial velocity, minus m1, so, uh, minus m times one ninth v initial all divided by m2 which is 2m so we have m v initial minus 1 9 that's a 9 divided by 2 so it would be equal to v2 final would be 8 divided by 2 or 4 ninths v initial of course v initial being v initial of the first object so now v1 final there we go so now we have the final velocities of the two masses from that, we should be able to find the initial and the final kinetic energy. So we can assume that the loss in kinetic energy is then transferred into heat. So let's go kinetic energy initial. Kinetic energy initial is equal to 1 half m1 v1 initial. Whoop, v1 initial, right there. Okay, because this, the second object did not have any kinetic, initial kinetic energy, so it's equal to 1 half times the mass times v1 initial, so that would be, well, v initial quantity squared. So this here is the initial kinetic energy. Now let's find the final kinetic energy. Kinetic energy final is equal to 1 half m1 times v1 final squared. And I guess I'm missing a square here, am I not? Yes, there it is. Plus 1 half m2 v2 final squared. And so let's see what that is equal to. So that would be equal to 1 half times the mass for the first object, v1 final, which is 1 9 v1 initial. And we square that, so that would be 1 over 81 v initial squared, plus 
The second object, which is one half, times twice the mass, times its final velocity, squared, that would be 16 over 81, 16 over 81, v initial squared. All right. So now we have to add those two together. Let's go over here and continue. So kinetic energy final is equal to one half m and one half two m, eighty one. So let's see here. That would be one over one sixty two m v initial squared. So one over one sixty two m v initial squared plus the twos cancel out. That would be sixteen over eighty one or thirty two plus. 32 over 162 mv initial squared. Let's see here, the twos cancel out. 16 over 81 is 32 over 162 plus 1 over 162. So that would be equal to 33 over 162. That would be mv initial squared. Now 162 is divisible by 3, so it's 33. That means that the kinetic energy final can be written as 11 over, that would be 54, 54 mv initial squared. That's the final kinetic energy, and there we have the initial kinetic energy, which is 1 over 2, or we can say that the kinetic energy initial is equal to, putting it in the same terms, I multiply by 27, that would be 27 over 54 mv initial squared. This is final, this is initial kinetic energy, so now we can find the change in kinetic energy. The delta kinetic energy is equal to the kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial, which is, uh, let's see, oh, I think I better do that the other way around, right? It would be initial minus the final because the initial is bigger than the final. So initial, that would be uh, 27 over 54 minus 11 over 54 times mv initial squared, which is equal to, that would be uh, 27 minus, that would be 16 over 54 mv initial squared. Divide both sides by two, that would be equal to delta kinetic energy, would be equal to eight over 27 mv initial squared. So now we have the change in the kinetic energy which we should be able to convert into the increase in heat. Now we're being told that only half of the change in kinetic energy goes to one object and the other half goes to the other object because they share equally. So now we can say that one half the change in the kinetic energy, and I need to draw an arrow because it's of course not equal, when half the change in kinetic energy is going to be half this amount, or 4 over 27 mv initial squared. So now we have the change in kinetic energy, and that is what's converted into heat, and that heat is going to change the temperature of the object. Now, we say that half the kinetic energy or have the change in kinetic energy, not kinetic energy, but the change in kinetic energy, is equal to the heat added to the object, which is equal to mc delta t. Now, of course, that would be m2c delta t, and c is equal to c. We're trying to find delta t. That means that delta t is equal to the heat added divided by m2 times c, and of course the heat added is half the change in kinetic energy, half the change in kinetic energy, divided by m2, which is 2m, times c, and half the change in kinetic energy is equal to 4 over 27 mv initial squared, divided by 2mc. Now when we simplify that, delta t is equal to 4 divided by 2, or 2 over 27 times the initial velocity squared divided by the specific heat of mass 2, and this is then the change in the temperature expressed in terms of the initial velocity of the first mass divided by the specific heat of the second mass, and that is how it's done.